Hi everyone. I am Dharmendra Shet from Fluent Lingua Surat. I am sure you met some people who say English is easy. Now let me give you a few points. I'll discuss them in detail, and then you decide whether English is easy or not. Let's begin with the English alphabet. What's the first letter of the English alphabet? It's the letter A. Now, how is it pronounced when it is used in a word? Can you say? It's not possible. Why? Because it, in a word like apple, the letter A is spoken as a. In a word like ability, it is spoken as a. In a word like all, it is spoken as o. In a word like ask, it is spoken as a. So how can you decide how to pronounce a particular letter? Let's take another letter B. In a word like climb, C L I M B, you don't speak the last letter B. You don't say climb, B. You just say climb. And there are many such words in English where B is silent. For example, in bombing, you speak the first letter B, but you don't speak the second B. You don't say bombing. You say bombing. If you take another letter, for example, C, then in a word like case, C is spoken as K. In a word like change, C is spoken as Ch. In a word like city, it is spoken as sir. How do you how do you know it, it in advance? It's difficult. You can't make a guess about the pronunciation of any letter in a word. You can take all letters one by one like that, and you will find lots of irregular behavior in terms of pronunciation. For example, if you take a letter T in a word like T. A teacher, it is spoken as t. In a word like nature, you have ch. In a word like nation, it is sh. So how do you, how do you know it in advance? It's not possible. Now compare English with Indian languages. In Indian languages, every letter has a fixed sound. For example, if you take k. It is always spoken, and it is always spoken in the same way, whether it is karvat or kathar or kabutar. Whereas in English, any letter can have any sound actually, and you can never know it know it in advance. Let's go one step further. Think about a letter G. In a word like gigantic, we have two G's, and the first G is spoken as J, and the second G is spoken as G. That's another problem. Gigantic. Now we talk about uh, the letter T, spoken as T in T. Ch in nature, sh in nation, but then think about the word listen. L i s t e n. There, the letter t is silent. In Indian languages, we don't have silent letters at all, and I'm sure in many other languages also. So English is not easy. That's my premise. Now let's go one step further and think about. Uh, Say the present continuous tense, one of the most, you know, important tenses in English. The present continuous tense. Normally, you use it when some action is going on in front of you. Say, I am speaking. You are listening. You are watching this video. 
So, when the action is going on we use the present continuous tense. Now, I can use the same structure to be plus ing, m is a and the ing form of the verb that is the present continuous tense. When I talk about some arranged future, planned future, for example, I am meeting the manager tomorrow. So, when I say I am meeting the manager tomorrow, I am using the same tense, the present continuous tense, but now I am talking about the future time, right. So, in structures also we have a lot of irregularities, the present simple for example, is not always used for present time, it can be used for past, present, future depending on the context and the cotext. Let us take a word say went or new. So, normally students they keep in mind went means the past simple form. So, it is always used for the past action, it is not like that. Went can be used for present time or future time. For example, if you are at a party and if it is very late in the evening, then you might tell somebody who has come with you it is time we went home, it is time we went home. So, there we are using went the past simple form of go, but we are not actually referring to past time. Another example, the past tense form of no is new k n e w. Now, suppose you ask me a question and if I do not know the answer now, then I can say I wish I knew it. So, when I say I wish I knew, I am not actually referring to a past time, I am talking about the present time, I wish I knew. Let us take another grammar word, I am sure you are familiar with auxiliaries, modal auxiliaries, can, could, should, may, might, dare like that. Let us take just one example, many people say could means the past tense form of can, so you use it for the past time not necessary. Could can be used for present time. For example, suppose somebody has finished his formal education and he comes to you and asks you, what should I do now? Then you can make a lot of suggestions. You could start your own business, you could join some company, you could go for further studies. So, we are talking about all future actions, proposed future actions. So, here could is used for future time. Now, suppose uh, you want to make a request now, somebody has come to meet me and I am recording this video. So, you can say could you please wait for some time. So, when I tell that person could you please wait for some time, I am referring to the present time. So, could can be used for past, for example, when I was a child. I could run fast, that is ok, but could is not always used for the past time, it can be used for the present time, it can be used for the future time as well. So, another irregular behavior of the English language. Let me take another modal auxiliary and this time let us take the negative form, say may and not, can you use may and not as two words in English? of course you can. Can I use will and not as two words? Fine, there are contracted forms like won't, but suppose I do not want to use contracted forms, I can use two words I will not attend the party, that is fine, no problem. Can I use should and not also? Yes, of course you can, you should not do this. Now, can I use the words can and not as two words? No, you cannot. Cannot is always used as one word. Shall not two words possible, will not two words possible, would not possible, should not possible, but can and not they cannot be used as two isolated words. They have to be used as one word cannot, no space between can and not. You can ask me why, yeah ask me why. Well, the answer is English is English. There are so many such irregular things and how can you say English is easy? Let me go further. 
Now let us talk about vocabulary. Suppose somebody asks you to give the opposite word for appropriate, you can say inappropriate. Let us say another word um, sensitive, insensitive, active, inactive. So, now you form a rule in your mind by keeping in at the beginning of a word that means using it as a prefix. You are converting a normal adjective or an adverb into an opposite word. So, appropriate, inappropriate, fine active, inactive, fine, sensitive, insensitive, fine, flammable, inflammable, fine, no. Now, flammable and inflammable, they are the same, something that burns very quickly, which catches fire very quickly, that is flammable and the same is the word for inflammable. That is why on tanker sometimes you see highly inflammable. So, here by adding in at the beginning, you are not converting it into an opposite word. Similar is the case for valuable. So, valuable and invaluable are the same. So, even in vocabulary, you can see there are lots of irregularities. I am sure you have heard the word seen. Now, if I ask you to spell that word, you will be confused because you do not know in what context I want that word. So, if I ask you write this sentence, have you seen that scene? Now, I am sure you will write the same word seen in two different ways. In the first scene, have you seen? So, there S E E N and second seen. Have you seen that seen? So, second one is S C E N E. So, the sounds are the same, but spellings are different, meanings are different. Not only that, sometimes spellings are the same, sounds are the same, but still the meanings are different. If you do not believe me, let me give an example. There is a bank on the bank of the river Tapti, but you cannot bank on that bank. Now, here the first bank is a financial institution, second bank bank of the river and third bank rely depend, you cannot bank on him, you cannot rely on him. So, their bank is a verb. So, here you can see the spellings are the same, the sounds are the same, but still the meanings are different. Let me give you another example, another strange behavior. If somebody plays well, you say he is a good player. So, from play, you have made a word player. Now, using the same logic from sing, you will make singer, write, writer. However, you cannot use the same logic everywhere. If somebody picks others pockets, you cannot say he is a pickpocketer, because pickpocket itself is a noun, he is a pickpocket a very common word like cheat, he is a cheat. We do not normally use cheater. In fact, I have used cheater only in one dictionary, in only in one authentic dictionary. Otherwise, if you have uh, say Oxford, Cambridge, Longman, Collins, Macmillan dictionaries at home, you can check that word. The word cheater is not used. And recently, if some dictionary has added that may be because many people have started using that word. That is why it may become a part of uh, the lexicon of the English language, authentic formal lexicon of the English language. But at present, it is, a, it is better to avoid the word cheater and say cheat, he is a cheat. For example, if somebody in your family cooks well, do you say she is a good cooker? No, she is a good cook. So, now you can see there are so many irregularities. Let me give you one last example. I sometimes play cricket. Now, you know this word sometimes with an S at the end and in sounds it is Z sometimes. Now, suppose I remove that last letter S, 
sometime then it has a different meaning please come home sometime so there sometime is at an indefinite point of time visit us sometime call me sometime now suppose i use the same letters sometime but make two words some and time so it will have a different meaning let's spend some time together so there some time means some period of time so now you can see sometimes has one meaning he sometimes comes to my house do visit us sometime so at some indefinite point of time and please spend some time with us so this is just a small set of irregularities in the english language i'm sure there are hundreds more but one thing is confirmed english is not easy if you do not study it systematically you will never ever be able to become a normal natural spontaneous fluent user of english well enough for the day thank you very much for watching this video if you like it you can share it with your friends and please visit our website www.fluentlingua.com we have uploaded a lot of free material for you there are text material audio video and i'm sure there are some tests that you have seen if you're not please try some tests we have primary level intermediate level and even advanced level tests you can do them on your mobile you can submit your answers most of them are like multiple choice questions so you can select your answer then when you submit your answers you will get instant feedback and result and if you have any queries you can please send me an email or a whatsapp message my email is fluentlingua@gmail.com f l u e n t that is fluent l i n g u a lingua fluent lingua at gmail.com thank you very much have a nice time